Hi there, this is Heather with Autism Chrysalis, and I'd like to reflect for a moment on the journey of figuring out that you're autistic as an adult. There's a reason why I named my coaching practice Chrysalis. When a caterpillar forms a chrysalis, it literally dissolves inside the chrysalis into this goo. It's like caterpillar goo, it's DNA soup. And out of that soup, it forms a completely different creature that is made out of the exact same materials, the same DNA sequence, but that transformation is necessary. It will never become a butterfly until it lets go of being a caterpillar, until it breaks down entirely everything that it ever was and everything that it ever thought about itself. Yes, I'm reading a lot into the interior lives of caterpillars here. It's a metaphor, please go with it. But I too had to break down and be goo for a while before I could create who I am now. And that took a lot of work. And I got a lot of questions and comments about my choices during that time in the few years after my autism diagnosis, because it's not the same kind of work that we're used to seeing or that our society values. It's not the caterpillar going around and eating every leaf in sight. It's not the butterfly flying from flower to flower. It's not a pretty observable, achievement oriented or obvious kind of activity. The chrysalis hanging on the branch isn't going anywhere, but there's a lot going on inside. It's breaking down an entire living creature in a very specific way and then creating another complete creature out of it. There's a lot happening in there, even though all you see from the outside is this little chrysalis hanging on the branch. It's just hanging there. It's hanging there. It's still hanging there. It doesn't look like there's anything happening. It's just hanging there. But what you don't see is that inside everything is changing. And when you identify yourself as autistic or figure out whatever else has been going on in your life that you're just now being, a being able to put words to, it prompts those kinds of interior reflections, dissolving the old identity and forming the new one that I describe as the goo period. Everything is breaking down and forming anew. And that's hard. And sometimes it's wonderful and sometimes it sucks and sometimes it hurts, and sometimes it's amazing, and it's confusing a lot, and it's punctured with these revelations occasionally. From the outside, it might not look like you're doing much. It might look like you're wallowing or self-indulgent or lazy or making excuses. But what's going on inside is that you're breaking down the mental framework that you used for decades to think about yourself and the people around you and the world and systems at large and you're building up a new conception of yourself and of others. And that's a lot of work, even if it's not obvious what's going on. And it's necessary work. It enables every new possibility that will ever come to pass that, that wasn't available within your old conceptions. So what those new possibilities are, I can't say, and you probably don't know either at this point. There might be an inkling in the back of your mind about something that you would love but doesn't seem realistic, or you might not have any clue. Either way is okay. By definition, those new possibilities aren't realistic within the old mental framework, and therefore you have to create this new one first. This is how I did it and how I've seen many others do it as well. You heal the old hurts, the old wounds, you understand yourself better, figure out what you need, and figure out how to communicate that in ways that are more yourself, but translated for others. You learn to be yourself more than you ever have been, but in ways that feel right to you and that contribute to healthy relationships with other people. It's not easy or fast, but it is worth it. Oh my goodness, it is worth it. It is worth everything and anything that it takes because what you get at the end are wings. <laughs>